Welcome to this week's special presentation titled Trading the Hottest Sector ETFs. My name is Todd Schaefer, Manager of Research for VectorVest, and I'll be your presenter this evening. It's long been recognized that birds of a feather flock together. Stocks in similar industries and sectors tend to move in unison. Trading stocks within the leading sectors is a proven approach to finding winning stock trades. So well proven, in fact, we put the leading sectors and industries right on our homepage, along with the top VST stocks. For this demonstration, I want to focus on the top RT sectors, and we see the top RT sectors, the price trend strength, the sectors with the greatest price trend strength currently are petroleum, steel, metal products, utility, and mining. Petroleum the fastest with the strongest RT value, even though it was down a little bit today, it still has the highest RT score of the leading sectors in the database. If you right click on petroleum, you can see the stocks within that business sector. And now because we're looking at a list of stocks will be sorted by default by VST descending. Many of these stocks are also top VST stocks, so you can trade a few for your portfolio. As an alternative to buying individual stocks, ETFs are a great way to gain exposure to a variety of markets and sectors with a single trade. There are several ways that we can find them. Let's close this window, back to the home page, we'll go to the Viewers tab. Scanning down the toolbar, I see there's an ETF viewer. If I click that, the ETF viewer is simply a grocery list of all the ETFs that are in our database, sorted by VST descending. But we want to take a more sector-driven approach, so let's look at the sector viewer. In the top performing sectors, this is the mini list that we see on the home page is just a subset of this broader list of 41 sectors, again sorted by RT descending. So at the top of the list, the sectors that are in the strongest uptrend. Notice, by the way, how few are actually in uptrend by virtue of that RT analysis. Right below REITs, we see ETFs as a sector. If I right click on the ETF sector and look at the industries within that sector, This is the next level of refinement, and we can see now the industries are roughly equivalent to our broader sector classification of the broader market. The ETF sectors are only 32 in number, and of course, one of those is shorts or contra ETFs. So a slightly different breakdown than we saw with the stock sectors, but again, our top performers are rated by RT descending, so those are the strongest upward price trend at the top of the list. If I right click on our top ETF industry, I can look at the stocks within the industry group. And now we see the component ETFs in that industry group, commodities futures, sorted now by VST because we're down to the stock symbol level. But you may have noticed that the RV and RS scores are all one. Because we don't analyze the fundamentals of the ETFs, we score RV and RS as neutral at the value of 1. So our VST analysis is driven primarily by RT. Very similar to our industry and sector analysis. Did you recognize, by the way, that the buy ratings are all gravitating to the top of the list? We'll hold that thought because I want to go back to the viewers tab because I want to go back to our watch list viewer which also organizes ETFs nicely by vendor and type so if I come down to the ETFs watch list group you can see all of these watch lists leverage vendor their type whether they're regulars or contras so we have all of these offerings across the ETF group even here, many of these vendors offer ETFs with similar coverage. For instance, if we click into the Spiders group, let me expand our description, and you can see several oil and gas, natural resources, gold. Although they have similar names, you may find differences in the component stocks or their weighting 
as well as traded volumes, among other things. Recently, our Canadian director, Mr. Stan Heller, worked with our database team to create two cherry-picking ETF watch lists. So if we scroll up to the cherry-picking group, global market ETFs, and sector ETFs. So in summary, ETFs track some of the most actively traded indexes, commodities, and investment strategies. And there are several ways to find and analyze these ETFs in the VectorVest system. Now in this sector ETFs watch list, let me close the toolbar so we get more real estate. A fairly well diversified list of ETFs sorted by VST descending. And again, did you notice the buy ratings percolating to the top of the list? Well, why is that important? Remember the rules for the assignment of a buy rating. First, the stock has to have a price above the vector vest stop price and accelerating away from it. It also has to have an RT score above one, which means it's an uptrend. And it has to have a VST score above one. So remember, ETFs are RV and RS neutral, but we still have an ETF that is an accelerating uptrend, which is a great place to start to look for candidates. Did you notice, by the way, the correlation of these top ETFs with the top sectors? Remember, the top sectors were petroleum, steel, metal products, utilities, and mining. Because there's not a direct correlation between the ETF and our sector breakdown, Right-click on the ETF, and in this case, I'm going to choose OIH since petroleum was our top sector. And click View Stock News. This will link you out to the Yahoo Finance page looking at OIH. And if I scroll down the page, on the right-hand side, I see the top 10 holdings currently in the ETF. Any of those look familiar? Schlumberger, Halliburton, Baker Hughes, Transocean, etc. I also, scrolling lower, get a fund summary. The fund normally invests at least 80% of its total assets and securities that comprise the fund's benchmark index. The index includes common stocks and depository receipts of U.S. exchange-listed companies in the oil services segment. Such companies may include small and medium cap companies and foreign companies that are listed on a U.S. exchange. The fund is non-diversified. So an investment in OEI represents a diversified investment of these top holdings. And of course, the rest of the holdings within the ETF. Now, coming back to VectorVest, we also suggest that you check average volumes. Some of these ETFs are thinly traded, so you want to make sure there's enough liquidity for the size of your position. Also watch out for leveraged funds and or contra ETFs. So the industry will be industry short if it's a contra ETF. So how do these guys perform? Well, let's run a little test. If I check in on the market timing graph, I'm looking at a six month time frame, just the price action with the 40 day moving average. Our most recent low was established on the 24th of February. So let's go back to the viewers tab and let's reset our clock to the 24th of February. These were the top ETFs on that date. So let's run a quick test. Of course, we don't want to test them all because we'd be testing the market essentially. Let's instead just quick test the buy rated stocks at the top of the list. I'm going to right click and then click quick test. Here we can see that the six stocks as a basket, evenly weighted, returned a 9.43% return through tonight's close compared to the VectorVest composite performance at 1.41%. If you like, you can change that benchmark to the SPX, which was up 1.74%. So vastly outperformed the broad indexes coming up off of that low. So we can run a series of tests. Let's change our date to the next day, the 25th. 
I like the buy rated ETFs and run a quick test. These ETFs up 6.69% while the market was down a half percent. So running that comparison for all the days leading up to today, we can see the next tranche made 4.38% compared to the market being down a quarter percent by virtue of the SPX. Next day, the basket was up 1.73% compared to the market 1.33%. And finally, going yesterday into today, up 0.62% while the market was down a half percent. While I'm not presenting this as an exhaustive study, there is some potential here. So the question then becomes, well, how should we trade them? Well, let's look at their graphs. Back into the program, let's bring this date back to current. Here are our current top performers. Let's take a look at their graphs. And let's just use the vector vest layout where we have price, relative timing, and a moving average, a 40 day moving average of price over a one year time frame. And just look at the architecture of the chart, is all I'm trying to do here. And look at those chart patterns. We can see that some of these have quite a bit of volatility. And some of these charts are definitely uglier than others. And this suggests to me that cherry picking might be a good approach to these guys. You can utilize your favorite techniques, but I like to look for the smoother and trending charts. So let's cherry pick those looking for CI values above one. So if we go back to our list. I'm interested in the ETFs that are an uptrend by virtue of their buy rating, but I'm going to favor those that have the most persistent upward price trend with a CI value above one. Additionally, our Midas touch graph layout was designed to help us smooth out volatility. Our Canadian director, Mr. Stan Heller, gave us some insights on how he uses the Midas touch layout in his Canadian essay just two weeks ago. And yes, you can easily review his essays too if you log into the VectorVest Canada product. To do that, you simply open a second login Choose the country to be Canada. I'll put in my password and log in. Notice it tells me on the top toolbar that I'm in the Canadian product. And if I go to the views tab, in the views manager, I can go to the essay viewer. And here's his essay from two weeks ago on the 18th, the near perfect indicator. Double click it and let's scroll down to the essay. And I'll just skip to the highlights of the widely available indicators. My favorites are moving averages, support and resistance, MACD, stochastics, and RSI. I have rule-based strategies built around each one of them. There is, however, one near perfect indicator that I use with virtually all my setups. I recommend it to every trader, especially those who are new to technical analysis and those who don't have a clear, consistent, and repeatable setup that makes them money more often than not. The indicator is VectorVest's RT, or Relative Timing. VectorVest founder Dr. Bert Delito has written several essays about it over the years, and I have written a few myself. Check them out in the Canadian views of June 25th of last year, August 23rd of 2019, and October 6th of 2017. RT is excellent on its own, but more and more I like the 40-day moving average of RT, especially in the volatile markets we're seeing so far this year. It's an essential part of the Midas touch graph layout, but let me explain how you can use it to gain an edge and get into trades precisely when the upside momentum is increasing. The rules of market timing apply. When it's go time, select the Midas touch from graph layouts in the graph control panel. The 40 day moving average of RT will appear on the subgraph. Display the price and leave the moving averages of the stop price on the graph. Next, add the five day moving average of RT to the subgraph. It's a smoother proxy for the RT. And lastly, make sure the recommendation toolbar, the buy, sell, hold, rec ribbon, is running across the top of the graph. So before we get into his rules, let's set that up on our graphs. So I'm going to right click on our tag stocks and select view stock graph. And I'm going to change our layout to the Midas touch layout. Everyone has this in your program. If I scroll down, Stan added two things to the default layout, the five day 
moving average of our t. That's our now red line. Maybe I'll change the color of that. To something more bold. On my black background. And he added the recommendation profile ribbon to the top of the chart. Now I'll read from the essay. Here then are my rules for the safest setups to buy. Number one, the five day moving average of RT has recently crossed above the 40 day moving average of RT, particularly on deep pullbacks. Let's put a date line on the graph. Rule one, the five day moving average of RT has recently crossed above the 40 day moving average of RT, particularly on deep pullbacks. It looks like that first crossover was here. Rule two, the 40 day moving average of RT has stopped falling and is flattening out or starting to turn up. Oops. Well, that didn't happen until this crossover here. Rule number three, for the safest entry, wait for the next buy recommendation if there isn't one already. Well, we already have a buy recommendation. So we're all set there. And I've added a fourth rule for my own use. When the five day moving average of RT falls back below the 40 day moving average, then the window has closed. So any entry any time during this trend is okay. Of course, the optimal entry is closer to the crossover. But Stan continues, that's it. Once you start looking for this pattern, it'll literally jump off the page for you. It'll tell you three things, the trend, how strong the trend is, and the safest time to buy and sell. So in summary, buy rated ETFs confirmed with the Midas touch crossovers of the five day moving average of RT above the 40 day. So let's look at our charts. Here's a crossover. The first crossover we identified, did we have an opportunity to make some money on this trade? Moving to the right, RT descending. So here's our next crossover. Did we have an opportunity to make some money on this trade? Probably actually closed at a loss because the market continued to pull back. Our next crossover, did we have an opportunity to make some money? I think so. And our next crossover, RT still descending. So maybe this crossover will be our next entry. And of course, we've had an opportunity on this most recent turn. Let's take a look at our next candidate, XLE. In the energy space, RT in decline. The 40 day moving average of RT in decline here. We are bottoming out and we get our first crossover. We are buy rated. Probably a little flat on this trade. Again, bottoming. Here, did we have an opportunity? Absolutely. Bottoming here, another opportunity. XOP, here's our crossover. Nice opportunity there. RT is still pulling back when we got this crossover. So you might've deemed that a little aggressive. Finally picked up our buy rating here, but still had a nice opportunity on this trade. And this is where price structure helps. Another opportunity here. There's our crossover. You might've still wanted to wait for RT to bottom and start rising again before we took our entry here but still an opportunity to make money on this methodology. And finally, we come to IGE. Much flatter price action here, but coming over to our first crossover with RT flattening or rising. Opportunity here, which probably would have traded flat or a small loss. Here's our crossover. Again, RT not bottoming until this time frame. We didn't get our buy rating until here. Nice opportunity on this trade. And here's our crossover again. RT still descending. So maybe if we waited for that to bottom and start to rise a little later entry, but still a nice opportunity for a good trade on IGE. So that's the first step. Second step is when should you close these trades? Well, again, all techniques are available. These are more swing trade in duration, but trend lines, moving averages, support and resistance levels, pivot points, MACD, Stochastics, RSI, all your favorite technical indicators can be applied to this price action. And that would include the five day 
our MA of RT crossing back below the 40, that closed the window of opportunity. But on a nice trending price pattern, that can also be a nice signal of a breakdown or weakening of price momentum. And that's one of the benefits of cherry picking technique is the flexibility to design a trading system perfectly tuned to your preferences. So as an alternative to buying individual stocks, ETFs are a great way to gain exposure to a variety of markets and sectors with a single trade. And as always, VectorVest makes it simple. Thank you for watching.